As the crew carrier for the Granite Mountain, Hot Shot, leave Yarnell Hills Fire and begin their journey home. All personnel in the incident will observe an operational pause in remembrance of our fallen comrades. Honor guards from fire departments across the state are accompanying these bodies. These gentlemen are never going to be left alone. Keep waiting for the door to swing open and him come in with his big shiny smile and see his dimples, you know. It just doesn't feel real yet, you know. I called him twice yesterday. It's just so I can maybe hear his voice again. Let him know much of love me. I'm not going to be sad because I see him in my heart. And she's four, so I pray that's with her forever. I knew some of them boys, and I loved them just like I did my own son. And uh, they were amazing young men. All of them had character and honor and integrity, and, and they died the way they lived. I was born here. I don't know how I'll ever look at that mountain this same. I mean, it's a huge loss. They can't be replaced. Um, yeah, somebody else can maybe sit in the seats eventually, but they're not going to be those guys. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to special 12 News coverage here from Prescott and also from Yarnell. Today marks a somber anniversary in Arizona. It's been 10 years since 19 Granite Mountain hotshots lost their lives battling the Yarnell Hill Fire. Here is a live look from both Prescott and Yarnell, where memorial events are happening to honor those fallen firefighters. The whole state, of course, was impacted by this tragedy. The Yarnell Hellfire happened about 90 miles northwest of Phoenix and a little less than 50 miles away from here in Prescott. All of the communities impacted on that day to a great extent and we're all still feeling the pain. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for 12 News at 4 on this very somber day. I'm Cuddy the Divine. And I'm Mark Curtis. Uh, behind us we is the famous Prescott Courthouse, where a big crowd is gathered as they watch a ceremony that's been playing out here for about the last 45 minutes or so. We've heard from Governor Katie Hobbs, some of the families of the fallen hotshots, and Brendan McDonough, the lone survivor who was a spotter on that day. The ceremony was kicked off by the mayor of Prescott, Phil Good. Let's listen in to what he had to say. Ten years. Ten long years. Ten short years. Ten years ago, this community experienced the most tragic, horrible incident anyone in their worst nightmare could imagine. A hotshot crew is 20 men. 19 of those died that day on June 30th, 2013. But there was one survivor, one lone survivor, Brendan McDonough. He was here today to give the hotshot prayer. Let's listen in. Would you please pray with me? Father, thank you for this day that we can gather to commemorate this sacrifice made 10 years ago. Thank you for this community that has stood by the families and each other, and that through these connections, that you have brought healing and encouragement. Because of the way these men strove to live authentic lives, they left behind a legacy that has positively impacted us to this very day. Lord, we are grateful these men were willing to make the ultimate sacrifice for others. May we be reminded of the sacrifice you made so that we could be in close relationship with you, and that through this relationship, we can experience true hope perfect peace and abiding joy. I invite you into this service. Be honored as we honor the crew. Amen. Some somber words from the lone survivor of the Granite Mountain Fire, the Arnell Hill Fire. Um, and I, I can't imagine what he has gone through, Will. In the 10 years since then, we know that he's, Brendan is now a motivational speaker. He started a drug rehab center because, in a lot of ways, wildland firefighting 
helped heal him. He had a heroin addiction. It really did, and that was that was one of the things that he had to struggle with after all of this was over. Was was he going to slide back to how he was? Was he going to be able to go on? You know, uh, of course he suffers from or suffers from survivor's guilt, PTSD, all of those things. We know that, and a lot of those families. You heard it from the soundbite from the mayor: ten short years, ten long years. It's been exactly that. It's been long, and it's been short. And these families have had to deal with that. One of the moms of one of the firefighters told me that it was a hole in her heart that never heals, and that's exactly how it's been for all of these families for the last 10 years leading up to today. People come in here all the time and, and say, I just remember where I was that day. Those was people that? don't know who Karen Norris is, but they're usually standing within sight of her son, Scott. I didn't even know what a hotshot was, honestly. I didn't even know the danger of it. I didn't know. And, and, and he, Scott explained to me, he said, Mom, it's not... It's not that dangerous, except for this type of situation, or you know. And he he did include the weather circumstance that happened that day. Scott was a firefighter with the Granite Mountain Hotshots, 20 firefighters considered elite crews on the ground. Ten years ago, they drove into the mountains near Yarnell, fighting to save the town. Storm clouds came. The winds picked up and changed direction. One hotshot made it out. 19 died. We supported him in whatever he wanted to do, and uh, I knew it wasn't the safest occupation, but uh, that's what he wanted to do. John Marsh's son, Eric, was the founder of the Hotshot Crew and the leader. If he didn't have an alligator or a polo pony on the shirt, he didn't wear it. Then he comes out here, and it was hard to understand why someone with a university degree would choose uh, one of the hardest, dirtiest, jobs that you can imagine. Andrew being the sawyer, uh, you know, he had to carry not only the pack, he had to carry the saw and its tools and, you know, this is hard work. Andrew Ashcraft was 29 when he went to Yarnell. You do it because you love it. Certainly not because of the pay, certainly not because of the medical, but you thrive at sleeping on the dirt. You thrive the camaraderie of your crew. You thrive the challenge. June 30th, 2013. 10 years ago. I had gotten a text actually from Scott. Um, he texted me when he, whenever he went on fires and he knew I'd be praying and he, um, he texted me about four o'clock and just all he said was, the fire is running at Yarnell. Our entire crew was lost. We lost 19 people in this wildfire. I was numb at first. I, I was, um, some of my friends were saying, well, it's okay to cry, and I, I, I was numb. I was in shock. That's a hole in your heart that cannot be filled, hands down, period. So you just have to learn to live with this hole. Ten years, uh, you live it still every day. In the ten years since, the families of Granite Mountain have kept going in their own ways. I think faith as well as support of uh, family and friends. And when I tell one I, someone I don't have a family, the firefighters, if you're talking to one of them, they say, yeah, you got a family, it's us. John Marsh and Karen Norris started the Granite Mountain Learning Center. They work here, talking to people about their sons. Trying to uh, keep myself busy, and then being able the last five years to work here at the center has uh, kept my mind uh, on the important things. Some families have moved away. Others, like John, Karen, and Deborah, have stayed in Prescott, even with the constant reminders of what they lost. Seriously, a couple of years after uh, the tragedy, we thought about moving back home. And uh, as time went on, my wife said, well, our son lived here. He uh, is buried here. And a lot of our friends have moved on and passed away. And so uh, she got to the point she didn't want to go back home that this was home. How do you walk away from those memories? I can't go somewhere else and make more memories with Andrew. His childhood memories are here. The Granite Mountain hotshots have never reformed. They may never. What they left behind is more than a legacy, more than firefighting. They were a team, a family, with families of their own. I'm honored to say that my son was on it. Would I take it all back to have him back? Yes, I would. And, Will, you cannot underscore how this has impacted this 
small town. Behind us, it looks like nearly every resident of Prescott is here. You could hear a pin drop as they listen to the speakers up there. I, I was walking two steps after I got here. I ran into one of their teachers um, that had stories, and she was still crying to me 10 years later. And literally everybody. I mean, you look at this crowd behind us. None of those people probably knew any of these hotshots. They just maybe heard about them, heard about the Prescott had a fire crew that was doing wildland stuff. This is what happens when the crew becomes part of the town. You know, they died in Yarnell. Yarnell adopted them, but Prescott was their home. And this is what happens when that crew is here at home. And they saw them as protecting their homes, because that's what they did. They were protecting lives. They were protecting property. They were protecting livestock for these people. And they died doing it. And that's how they got their name, too, protecting Granite Mountain. Literally, Granite Mountain, you can almost see it from here, from where we are. And that's how they, they got their name, was fighting a fire on that mountain that protected a large part of this town. And, and it's interesting, Eric Marsh, the crew chief, had the saying, better to, to be to be to be rather than to seem and I think that sums up who these men were in a nutshell they wanted to live life they didn't want to one of them said I'd, I'd rather die with my boots on than live in a suit and I think they all felt that way yeah and that was the slogan of the hotshot crew essay quam videri that was Eric Marsh's Latin slogan to be rather than to seem they wanted to be hotshots not just call themselves that but live that every single day and they lived that all the way up until they died. And I, and I think that's what has caused this tremendous scar that 10 years later, in fact, that we're coming up at 4.43, we'll mark the exact moment when unfortunately these 19 perished. This, this community reflected them and they reflected this community. They really did and continue to do so today. You will not find a single person in this town that does not remember where they were in Prescott or anywhere else in this state yeah. when they heard what had happened. I mean, this has just rippled along for 10 years. And, and Will, I want to talk about the jobs they did because I don't think a lot of people know what hot shots do. They're not like regular firefighters. These guys are hands on. They are in the wilderness, the most unforgiving conditions. It's very elite, is what they call themselves, the elite firefighters. And it is an incredibly hard job. These are the guys that are on the ground. When you see video of wildfires that we shoot, these are the guys with the axes, with the hose, with the, the pickaxes, digging lines. These are the guys who are cutting down the trees, making fire breaks by hand. You know, you wonder how fires stop. It's you, you run out of things to burn. And these are the guys who remove everything that is possible to burn and keep the fire from moving forward. It's a backbreaking job. It means sleeping on the ground. It means sleeping in camps. It means being on on the road for months at a time. These guys were always gone doing this wherever they needed to be. But their spirit certainly lives on in this town and over the next 90 minutes as we continue our coverage through 5.30 and then we pick it up again from 6 to 7, you'll hear the stories not only of these families but also of the town trying to heal now 10 years later. Our 12 News coverage continues right after this.